Hey, what's up guys? We landed in Iceland. As you can see, it is cloudy, it is rainy, but there will be such an amazing gravel race this weekend and it is the Rift Iceland. I'm so excited about this course because it is going to be so challenging in terms of the road condition, the gravel conditions, the rocks, the wind, the rain, so many components and to make this race very interesting and to make sure that I at least survive the 200 kilometer race, we need to talk about everything that do I bring with me on the bike, in my top tube and in my frame bags. So this is just to give you guys some ideas on what to bring onto longer gravel race, just to make sure you have everything you need in case something happened. And just to also make sure that you're not gonna bunk halfway through the race, being stuck in the middle of nowhere. What bike am I using? You guys know it's the 3T Explorer. This bike is probably the best gravel bike you can get on the market. It's aero. It looks good, the paint job is amazing, it's comfortable, and there's a lot of vibration dampening down in the rear triangle. And what I love about this frame is the down tube, it gets really wide to accommodate the bottle, but the thing is, it's, the frame is designed for wider tires, so the airflow is perfectly and it's more aerodynamic. But that's enough about the frame, you guys have seen it, you guys know about it. Now let's have a look at what's inside my top two bags first. So the top tube, the strategy is, this is what I need to be the most accessible because if you guys never run a top tube, I love it. It's now my favorite bag because it's just so easy to access it. And you wanna put something there that you wanna remind yourself that you need. And for me, the most important part about it is carbs. Carbs, carbs, carbs. So these are my 10 plus, I have 12 bars from Exact Nutrition. So these are 100 calories, 25 grams of carbs. And I wanna eat one of those every 45 minutes throughout that eight hour effort. So I have 12 of these and I just wanna make sure that they are accessible, they're easy to bring up to my hands, open it up, eat my bars and put back the trash in the top two bag. Don't leave your trash up that outside. One more thing here that I absolutely need and these are salt stick fast chews. So these are kind of like candies, but they are electrolyte stabbed so it will prevent cramps over time. It will just be better for longer efforts eat maybe one of these two an hour. I have 12 in this pack, so I will be eating those pretty much all day. And they're kind of like a treat. So that's why you want something that you absolutely love that you can eat on the bike easily. Now next in the frame bag, this is a little bit more difficult to access, but still easy while riding. So this is where all my solid food's going to be at because you don't want to eat only carbs bar the whole day. And that's why I have a lot of variety, not one single bar, because the thing with solid bars, you don't really want to get tired of the taste and the chewiness and you want to mix it up. So I have a, a bunch of different brands. None of them are sponsored here. So we have onion stinger waffle and unwrapped waffles. We have Cliff bars. We have JoJ bars. We have two flavors of JoJ. We have Lara bar. So these are just from your regular grocery stores. And we have another JoJ. So all of these have a little bit more calories inside of them. They're a bit harder to eat when you're riding, when you're doing your effort, but you absolutely need to have those type of bars during a longer effort. And next, I also have some, some bars I call some treats. Uh, these for, are from Exact Nutrition, and these are protein bars, and they are not that much recommended to eat on the bike, but what I love about them is first, they're full of calories, uh, which you need during your ride and after the ride, but they're just so good to the taste that it's an easy way to bring calories in. When I, I have two of those, so during the ride, when I, I just cannot eat those bars anymore, I go for the one that tastes just so good. So the exact protein are my favorite. Uh, that's why I, I bring two of those with me during the ride. And usually after the ride, I might eat one or two or three of those just to get back all the protein and all the calories that I burned throughout the day. And lastly, inside of my frame bag, I am bringing with me straight up sugar in this little bottle. In this old salsic electrolyte bottle, there's 90 grams of carbs. The reason why I'm bringing this straight up sugar with me is because when you go to refuel station in gravel bike race, uh, they always have Gatorade and drink mix, but sometimes the drink mix is most often than not very diluted. So you don't get a lot of carbs inside of, of your water bottles when you're refilling up. So that's why I'm bringing with me at least 90 grams. So I could do, I could, I could split 45, 45 in two bottles throughout the day. 
plus the, plus the carbs that there's already in their water, well, their Gatorade. So with me, I have three water bottles. These are 500 ml water bottles. Uh, if I was going to ride maybe in the summertime and it's 45 degrees, I would maybe run 750 millimeters water bottle, but these are 500, should be fine because here it's, it's cold and I'm not gonna drink that much. The problem with the frame bag plus the bottle is here, as you can see, I could not really have bigger bottles. So the frame bags today is going to be a good plus. And now inside of my other frame bag pocket on the other side, this is where all the mechanics of things go. Um, the reason why I put a lot of stuff in the frame bag and not in my rear pocket is Dylan Johnson said it. It's more aero to have a frame bag with stuff inside of it than in your rear pockets bulking up. So I'm trying to bring here everything I need in case of an emergency on the bike, everything mechanic. So with me, I'm bringing two little muck off, one dry, one wet lube for muck off. So I'm gonna top off the chain lube uh, mid-ride. If it's raining a lot, I want to put lube again. I have here for muck off again, a uh, plug with the tool and it's already ready to go as you can see. So if in case I have a tire leaks, I get off the bike, I bring this out, I push it in, and maybe I, I don't even need to put back tire pressure inside of the tire because I'll be quick enough with this. This is a tip that I got from Ada Roberge and it's working very well. Next up, I have my CO2 already ready to go. So all I need to do is just screw it a little bit more, can add more air, I have a few more plugs and I also have a general bike tool, so in case I need to take the wheels off, I'm not carrying tubes with me because there's absolutely no way I'm putting a tube here. If there's a problem that a plug can't fix it, uh, my race is over, I'm not gonna be changing. I have tubeless sealant, I have a cush core inside of the tire, so uh, there's no way I can put a tube in there anyway. In terms of the clothing, it's cold here. It's like 10, 12 degrees. It might be rainy. So this is what I'm gonna run. I'm going to be running arm warmers, a jersey, a wind vest from Pedal Mafia here. And the bibs will be from Red Ride. So Red Ride this partnered up with this series, sponsoring this trip to Iceland. And they send over their cargo bib, which is absolutely unreal. There's like, there's a lot of storage with pockets on the side, on the back. But it is so cold that I will be running their winter bib. So what I love about it is it's insulated, it's super hot, kind of water resistant as well. So the droplets get off the bib and you can stay as dry a little bit more than without. So I love this bib. The chamois is very comfortable for this 200 kilometer ride. If you guys need some bibs for your next adventure, definitely check out Red White Bibs. But also now my next tip here, as you see, it's a gray sky, it is wet. And in a rear pocket here, this is the only thing I have in my rear pocket, I'm trying to stay as light as possible. And that is a rain jacket from 7 Mesh. As you see, it's 100 gram, it's very small, and I can put it out while I'm riding, while I'm on the bike. If it starts to pour rain, I'm going to put it up. And as you see, this is a Gore-Tex shell. It's windproof, it's very warm and it's just so small that you can carry it everywhere with you. It's, it's actually getting a bit, a bit cold. So usually I can put it on my back while I'm riding and I can take it off while I'm riding. So this is a skill that you guys need to practice. And now to round up this video, I'm gonna go over everything that I have on my bike quickly. So tires are Pirelli Cinturato 40 mil and I'm running Cush Cores inside of them. And what the ability that Kushkur allows you is to ride at lower PSI without damaging your rims. And you can also ride with a total flat. So this is a good thing to know that you come all across the world to a gravel race. And if you have a tire slash 40 kilometers in and you can still ride this bike on the flat, this all ride. So it's a kind of an investment here to get the most out of your bike trip. Next, the wheels are 3T Discus 45D. These are the most aero gravel wheels on the market. I love them. Next, we also have my GoPro up front here on a quick release mount so I can vlog while riding and make the films that I'm doing on this YouTube channel. The head unit is the Amarad Carrier 2. I love it. It's very good for navigation. The battery life is just okay, but there's enough battery for a full day on the bike. Group set wise, Campagnolo A car 13 speed. That's great. I love the flexibility and the ability of a one by system. And there's a lot of range in the rear for the cassette. Saddles, Pro Stealth Saddle. Pedals are Richie, World Champs. I don't remember their name, but they're great. I love them. All right, guys, so this is it for my overview video. If you have 
more question about all of this gear, please leave a comment down below. I reply to every single comment on this YouTube channel. If you do need energy bars, I highly suggest that you guys check out Exact Nutrition. There will be also a discount code in the description down below for you guys in Canada and into the US now. So now make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay tuned for my full recap video experience of the Rift here in Iceland. Plus, we are gonna film a pretty nice feature film in the next couple of days, so you really don't want to miss that out. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already. My name is Charles, and I will see you on the road, on the gravel, or into the next video. Peace.